Not too long ago, I did a video breaking down why I thought Chinese homages that are basically one-to-one -one copies of more popular watches really aren't quite the value that people tend to think they are. In particular, I had in mind the Steel Dive SD1970 because that's one that I have had a lot of people recommend that I check out. So in that video, I ordered one for review and jokingly said I thought it would take about three months for it to get here from China. All right, so now that I've ordered the watch, I've still got another two months before it gets here. But two weeks later, this showed up on my door. So right off the bat, that's one thing that I got wrong about this watch. Today I'm going to go through and see if my concerns were justified or if I was completely wrong about everything. Is the Steel Dive ST1970 actually the best watch that you can possibly get for under $100? Let's check it out and find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. And surprisingly, I'm not the biggest fan of homages, which is odd because they're some of the hottest tickets in the affordable watch segment right now. And in fact, I ran a community poll where over 2,000 of you guys responded, and 67% of you said, homage watches are awesome. So I'm definitely in the minority here. But just to recap, there were five concerns that I had about homage watches, and things that I thought were gonna show up when I reviewed this steel dive, and those were poor customer service and shipping, low quality finishing and quality control, a blatantly copied design, no marketing costs, and an over-reliance on off-the-shelf parts. First, let's talk a little bit about what this watch is. Somewhat euphemistically, this is what most people would call an homage. And in watch terminology, that's when one brand basically copies the design of another more popular, usually more expensive watch. And it is typically differentiated from a replica in that a replica is a counterfeit watch. So if someone were to make a replica of a Rolex Submariner, it would say Rolex on the dial and they would try and pass it off as a genuine Rolex. Whereas an homage would copy the look and design of a watch, but they would put a different logo and and name and brand name on it. Now a lot of people have some strong feelings when it comes to using the term homage to refer to these watches that are basically blatant copies of other more popular watches. I don't like the term personally but that's basically what most people call these so I'm going to roll with it for now anyways. In the case of this particular watch, Steel Dive has gone back and copied one of Seiko's most classic designs, the Seiko 6105. This watch became extremely popular due to the fact that it was a great design, it was extremely rugged and well-built and comfortable, it was used extensively by the armed forces personnel back in the 70s, and its fame shot even higher when it was worn by Martin Sheen in the film Apocalypse Now. Martin Sheen's character was Captain Willard in that film, so ever since this watch has been nicknamed the Seiko Captain Willard. And where things get a little bit interesting is that around the same time that Steel Dive released their copy of the Captain Willard, Seiko did their own reissue of the watch. Last year, Seiko came out with the SPB-153, which takes that Captain Willard design and case shape and style and updates it with modern materials and a more modern movement. And this watch from Seiko, the SPB-153, retails for $1,100. This watch from Steel Dive has an extremely similar design and look, very similar dimensions, and even similar specifications on paper at least. However, the Steel Dive SD-1970 can be found for under $100. It features a 44 millimeter case with 20 millimeter lugs, about 46 and a half millimeters lug to lug, 13 and a half millimeters tall, a sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, a Seiko NH35 automatic movement, 200 meters of water resistance, and some extremely impressive, extremely bright loom. And again, you can get all of that for under $100. And getting a watch with those specifications and that design has to put it in the running for the best watch under $100, no question. And in many ways, I have been very impressed with this watch since I got it in. And while it has exceeded my expectations in some ways, most of the concerns I expressed in my previous video I found to hold true. Basically, what I think it boils down to is while this watch could very well be the best spec, best designed watch you can get for under $100 and still not really be a very good watch. So let me go through the concerns I expressed in the last video and show how they either were proven or disproven now actually having the watch in hand. 
starting with the customer service. This was actually one of the best experiences I've had ordering with AliExpress. I anticipated the watch would take at least a month to get here based on past experience, having ordered lots of things from AliExpress before. However, I had never ordered anything from the Steel Dive store, and it had actually been a while since I've ordered anything from AliExpress. It seems like in that time, either AliExpress has really stepped up their shipping, or maybe Steel Dive is just pretty good on it. Because again, I got this watch to my door within about two weeks. And when the watch did arrive, I didn't notice any quality control issues or defects in the watch. So they got off to a pretty good start. However, when I opened up the package and saw the warranty card inside, yeah, it doesn't really inspire much confidence that I'll ever get any sort of warranty support out of Steel Dive. I didn't even see any listing of how long the warranty was supposed to last. It just has a card that says international warranty that is unsigned with no real instructions on how to cash it in or to get service. And that's a problem because these watches do seem to be prone to having issues. Well, I haven't personally had any problems with mine in the few weeks that I've had it. I put up a community poll asking people if they had had any problems with their Steel Dive watches that they purchased. And with over 1,300 people responding, these were the results. 3% of the people said they got water in their cases. 6% said the movement ran poorly. 5% said something broke, like hands falling off or the bracelet or bezel problems. And 19% listed various other issues that they had with it. All in all, about 32% of respondents reported that they had had some issues with steel dive watches, which is pretty high, especially given the fact that you're probably not gonna get any warranty support out of them. So I still think that's one of the major cost-saving measures that they have here. You get a really insane deal on the specifications and the design of the watch, but you are running a risk there. All right, let's move on and talk about the finishing and quality control because this was another area where, you know, previous watches I've checked from AliExpress, particularly in this really affordable, like sub $100 price point, tend to have a lot of cut corners when it comes to finishing and quality control. And this is where I think it gets a little bit complicated with these watches. The tendency is to say, okay, this is an amazing watch for the price. So if you say it's great for $100 automatic watch, you're setting the bar pretty low. So I think most people, when they talk about these watches, they focus on the positives for the price, but I wanna talk a little bit about what you're actually getting at this price. So immediately there were some finishing issues that I noticed that didn't really scream quality to me. Let's take the loom that is on the bezel, hands, and markers. Now the loom on this watch, I mean, it's mind-blowingly bright for, for pretty much any dive watch. It's It's among the brightest dive watches that I've tested, which is a great plus, but it does reveal something interesting about this watch. You've got loom on the bezel, hands, and markers, and it looks like all three of them are three different loom formulations. And you might say, well, that's cool, bicolor loom. Um, I don't think that's necessarily what they were going for here. I think it kind of shows just a mismatch of parts where they were just getting the brightest things they could and not really caring if they really matched well together. The bezel is among the brightest on this watch. The loom appears to be something equivalent to BGW9. It glows incredibly bright blue. The markers are very large and they have this loom that glows a bright green and in the daylight it has kind of a yellowish tinge. And then the hands have kind of a greenish tinge in the daylight, also glowing green in the dark, but it's a different shade of green than the markers. So very bright very functional. But again, I think it kind of shows obvious evidence that they're sort of just picking and choosing parts from different manufacturers rather than trying to put together a cohesive design themselves. And speaking of the handset, it has kind of a cheap look to it. It's just a flat, polished handset. There's no bevels or really interesting edges. And if you zoomed in on in macro, it's kind of not really well finished at all. You know, you can really see that in the macro, but even from a normal distance, to me, it just kind of looked cheap compared to other watches that I've tested in the, you know, two to three, $400 price range. Uh, the dial also was really unimpressive. I got the matte black one and it just kind of looks like a sort of lifeless matte black, almost like it's made out of plastic. One of the worst aspects of this watch was the metal bracelet. Again, on paper, it sounds good. You get solid links, solid end links. It does have a pressed clasp, uh, but the problem seems to be that it's a very loose bracelet. It rattles around a lot and it pulls hair on my wrist. Um, it's a bracelet that's so bad that I basically would not wear the watch on that bracelet. It's uncomfortable. If I were to do this again, I would get the rubber strap option. I would hope that, that would be better or use some other aftermarket straps. Another thing that I noticed is that the spring bars look pretty bad on this. Like the edges look kind of loose, like they're about to pop out and they don't really inspire a lot of confidence. That's probably something that you should swap out once you get this watch is put a good solid pair of spring bars because if those fail, your watch is likely to fall off your wrist and break. Those were the biggest negatives to the finishing, but there were other parts that weren't so bad and some other parts that were actually pretty mind-blowingly good. On the okay side of things, the case finishing is about what I would expect for this price range. You do get a nice mix of polished and brushing, even though the brushing is pretty rough and the distinction between the polishing and the brushed areas is kind of hazy and a little fuzzy. And the back of the case kind of looks like an after 
afterthought. The bezel action is very solid and there's no back play. However, it does appear to be too tight for my liking. It's kind of difficult to turn. You gotta get a really firm grip on it and put some pressure to get it going. The ceramic bezel looks incredible for the price. It's got a very nice high polish on it. The engraving is sharp and crisp. The loom is filled in perfectly with no overflows or smudging. Really outstanding bezel insert. And as mentioned before, the loom brightness is absolutely insane for this price. Typically my tests involve measuring the brightness of the hands and the markers. And if you measure those, it scores a six on my J-score system, meaning it's about 60% as bright as a Seiko Samurai. But the actual brightest part of this watch is not the hands or the markers, it's the bezel. So if I change my testing system for this watch, and measured the hands and the bezel instead of the markers, its J-score bumps all the way up to a nine, putting it almost on par with the Seiko Samurai. Watches that are around $100, loom is usually pretty weak. So to see something this bright, even if it is mismatched, is really impressive. The hour markers on the watch are very cleanly applied and filled with loom. No smudging or overflows that I was able to detect. It's got a great looking box sapphire crystal that kind of adds a little bit of a premium look to the watch. I didn't have any problem with the crown threading or operation, and the watch itself didn't have any sharp edges on. It. The clasp on the bracelet on the other hand did. Again, I wouldn't get the metal bracelet on this watch. Now the next couple of things that I was concerned about obviously are going to be true. Yes, this is a copied design. It is heavily inspired by the Seiko Captain Willard. Obviously their marketing relies on people wanting a Seiko Captain Willard but not wanting to pay the price for it. So they save a lot of costs there. And yeah, this watch obviously is using a lot of kind of cobbled together parts from different places. And it does show in the end result. Again, the mismatched color on the loom, the uninspiring handset, the lifeless dial. This is a watch that looks great from a distance, but if you're gonna be wearing it every day and staring at it, there's probably gonna be things that you'll appreciate about it less and less as time goes on. Whereas I feel like a good watch with good design has the opposite effect, where the more you have it on your wrist, the more you're seeing it, the more cool things you're gonna notice about it. I think if I paid $200 for this watch, I would be pretty happy with it. If I paid $300 for this watch, I would be pretty disappointed in it. So when I see people saying, oh, this watch is just as good as the Seiko Captain Willard that costs a $1,000, um, I'm highly skeptical of that. And the same is probably true for basically any homage from Steel Dive or Pagani Design. Yeah, these watches appear to be amazing watches for the price, but in my experience, they're a far cry from the originals. So for me, this Seiko homage, it makes a fun beater watch. It's comfortable on the wrist. It borrows a really great classic design. Great loom, great movement, great specs all the way around. But for me, I feel like I'd get a lot more enjoyment from a watch that has a more original design. But judging from that community poll, 67% of you guys probably disagree with me. And if you are into homage watches like this, if you really get a thrill out of getting a great deal, I don't, I'm not trying to diminish your enjoyment of that in any way. But for those of you who are trying to decide, I wanna help you get at least a realistic expectation of what you're gonna get out of one of these watches. So let me know if you think I was able to do that. Let me know if you disagree with me on this particular watch or other ones, hit me in the comments down below. Love to follow up with you guys there. Also, if you're interested in a cool watch themed t-shirt like this one, check out justthewatch.com. Got a lot of really great original designs there. So you can pick one of those up as well. Anyways, that'll wrap up for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.